recording. Alright. So right now what we're doing is we're clearing out um, the rivet points for the rear trunnion on this AMD 65. You have to get the, when they send these kits uh, stateside, what they do is they will cut the rivets down off the receiver, cut the receivers off, throw these things in parts kits and send them over. So some of them have the rivets cleaned out of the rivet holes on the trunnion, some of them don't. This one did not. So just using a drill and and just stepping up bits. We're just using a hand drill, right? Right. I normally use a drill press to do this. Yeah, but I don't have a drill press, so we're just using a hand drill with increasingly larger bit size. Right. right. You want to be careful not to take out, if you're doing a screw build like what this is going to be, um, you got to be careful not to take out metal from the trunnion itself. If you're doing a rivet build, it doesn't matter. That trunnion or that rivet's going to fill the void, no big deal. Yeah, but if you are doing a screw build, you have to you be able to cut these threads to fit the screw kit. Now you can oversize it if you do accidentally cut them out too big. You can get an oversized screw and just step up the size of uh, the screw. So it's not a total loss. You, know, you don't have to buy a new trunnion or anything, but it is another step that you're adding unnecessarily as long as you're careful and move slow. You shouldn't have this problem. And um, so we have all four of these Let's see. rivet points. So we drill the rivets out. Cleaned out. Put it in the vise, drill the rivets out, and this is the very first step we're doing. Right? Right. This is the first step. Um, now, next, we'll probably um, set our pattern uh, on the receiver to cut the receiver. And then when we know that our uh, receiver's cut in the right spots, we'll go ahead and um, we'll thread out the trunnion for this screw build. Uh, use a tap and die set 10 by 32 or something. Yeah, 10 by 32. Uh, we're using this TAPCO uh, kit. I haven't used these before, but they seem all they seem to be just as good a quality. This isn't the kit. You used a different kit. Right? I use a CNC warrior, but they are the same. They're the same kit. Uh -huh. It looks exactly the same. And the, these kits are pretty cheap. So, so now the next step is cut the cut the lower receiver. We're gonna yeah we're gonna we have to drill the holes in the receiver uh, for the trunnion. One second. So what I do is, oh well this one, actually this one's already cut so we have to do that for the front of the trunnion. This one's already ready to go. Some of them are cut, some of them aren't, just depends on. So this is a no deck spud lower. This is a, a classic uh, firearms uh, AMD 65 kit that we got last year, I bought it last year. I think it was like 275 yeah. when I bought it. So this Note X, but the rear uh, trunnion holes are already cut for it. Um, so all we do, all we are going to do now at this point for this, is we will tap the threads, set the screws, test it out, and see how it, it is. You need to be careful um, when you are when you're cutting these threads. You got to make sure that it's flat, otherwise that it's it's perfectly lined up. So it's perpendicular. Um, it's otherwise, perpendicular. the screw sticks up. <clears throat> well, you'll get a screw that's kind of wonky. It'll one side will be down all the way, and the other side will be a little, um, a little high because you tapped it in at an angle, threaded it in at an angle. Is a huge so deal. Those, those holes all line up good, though, right? Yeah, they look good. They look good. You know, they're not. They're not probably perfect. These look pretty spot on. It, it, you get a lot of leeway with these. Well, it's a no deck spud. That's pretty quality. Now, right. the what we have to drill, we have to drill the front of. Well, front. We'll drill these front um, holes for the front trunnion. Okay. And that's all based on head spacing and, and everything. That, that's probably why they don't cut so any of these. Do you make your own guns and stuff? Yep, that's yep, what we're that's doing. That's what we're doing, buddy. 
Okay. Uh, so then there will when we get to that part we'll film that then, right? Yeah, so for now we'll go and tap this rear uh trunnion and it's the same for all of these mo all these different types of AKs. If you're having the traditional Woodstock AK which has, you know, two points here or an underfolder um which has a, a slightly different um trunnion setup or this this one is a side folder um, the approach is going to be the same you just gotta you gotta get the right receiver to go with the right trunnion yeah no I, I I bought this this Nodex but uh, receiver is specifically set up for an AMD 65 I specifically bought an AMD 65 lower receiver so it's got the cut in the back already for the side folder great yeah and I, when I bought this kit from um, classic firearms I bought a, a different um, rear trunnion. I got a traditional uh, trunnion on mine. So I still have the... It's, but you have a hard stock. You don't have a side I, folder. No, I put a, uh, an Archangel classical stock on mine. It's, okay. it's just, I just changed the receiver because I didn't like the side folder stock. I didn't want that. Yeah. Um, but that's how we're setting this one up. So next is, well, I'll get a pattern. Um, I'll take the the front trunnion and I use a post-it note, um, you know, that you can set across, mark the holes, lift the pattern, place it where you want it on this trunnion. You can line it up because you'll know exactly how deep you want um, the trunnion to sit at the front of the receiver. So it's it's all will be laid out to fit into the receiver. You put the you put your pattern over the top. You mark it, drill it out. And then, then you slide the trunnion in. With these kits, the barrels, <coughs> barrels are already set in them. You know, if you really want to do it professionally, you press the barrel out, and then rivet it on there. <laughs> no, we're not doing that. It's already head spaced. It's already the way it is going to be. So you have to use a shallow um, tap and die um, bit instead of a long tapered one that you'll use for these because. You can drill these deep, and you can use a tapered screw because that tapered or that tapered bit, because that tapered bit is going to go down further than the screw itself is going to go. Um, so you have a lot of extra space there. With this front trunnion, you don't have that space because that barrel's right there, and you don't want to cut into the barrel. So you have to get a, a very shallow um, bit to tap these screws because the screws that go on the front are a lot shallow a lot more shallow than the ones that go in the back um, but we'll get to that step next uh, for now we're gonna set our pattern we're gonna get these holes cut in the receiver hopefully everything lines up great because we don't want these holes to be off alignment that's mm -hmm. really important so okay well we'll, we'll get step. that to that in a minute then okay alrighty so we're on day two of this AK build this AMD build um, we got the rear trunnion tapped and screwed. Everything went great there. It's really you know, less difficult to do. It's, um, it's not something you can easily screw up. But you got those already cut, these openings, the holes for the receiver already cut. So all you got to do is clean out the holes. We discussed that yesterday. The hard part is this front trunnion here. <coughs> You gotta cut the holes, um, and you have to make a pattern of sort, right? So you gotta be able to transfer um, the pattern from that. I'm assuming you're not pressing this barrel out, so you'll have to make a pattern um, to transfer onto the receiver. Uh, on this side, <coughs> we used we used a uh, sticky note, like a post-it, because um, we had enough surface area on the top of the trunnion to just tape it there and fold it over, cut the screws, everything worked out perfectly. We cut the openings into the receiver, everything lined up great. We tried that on this side. <clears throat> we have very little surface area here, right? So but we did the best we could, got this screw cut, realized we augured out a little bit of the lower trunnion um, so the hole isn't lining up exactly into the lower trunnion, cut a little bit out of the trunnion. Now the hole is cut perfectly in the receiver. It's not catching 
um, full thread on the trunnion, but you know what? There's going to be a total of six screws in here. It's not life or death here. It's not going to ruin anything. Um, it's good enough. You know, some you do have some concern um, when you wall out too much of the receiver. Um, you have you do have some concern with possibly having the front trunnion um, moving back into the receiver, back and forth with the you know the nature of firing the gun, causing it to auger out or wall out the receiver over time. Um, <clears throat> but with six screws, it's not likely to happen. And if you're not, I mean, you're not using this as a dedicated, you know, platform that you're doing a ton of shooting with, I doubt it's really going to make that big of a difference in the long run for anybody. So we went with this pattern the second time around. We used a piece of duct tape and set it out and drew the pattern out to line up with the front trunnion. So the front of the trunnion lines up with the front of the receiver. There is a groove here that the receiver sits into the trunnion. And then there's the dimple for the magazine. Um, and that's what we placed over, drew our little pattern, made sure everything lined up properly. And uh, it looks like it it worked out great. So we used a smaller size drill bit to cut the opening. Now the um, it was a slightly off so um, the f top of the trunnion is right there at the top of this cut in the receiver uh, for the uh, from the smaller drill bit. So we'll have to take make sure take it down uh, when we put in the next size kind of Try to focus it down a little further. Cut the. Make sure we don't cut into the trunnion um, up top, and just make sure that the opening is the right size because well, we don't the, need to uh, cut the trunnion because it's already cut. But the uh, when we thread it, it may just th thread it out anyway. It's a little larger, right? It could, but we want to get a, we want to get a little bit more off this receiver first. Okay. And then the other one, you just got a dimp. We got a dimple where where we think the hole's going to be and so we can go to the next size bit. I think our small bit got dull and kind of quit cutting there. Right. Uh, but the, the smaller drill bit gives you room for error. Yeah. So if you're using the right, like the the number 21 to go with the 10, 10 by 32 screw, that's it. You're committed to that size. It drills it. That's where it is. That's where that and, screw's and going. And what what's the stuff we're using for this? We're using... Uh, uh, the screws are 10 by 32, and we use the drill bit, uh, the corresponding which is drill bit. number 21. Uh, so this is the tap at 1032. Yeah. And it will tell you which bit that you need to go with a number 21. Yeah, number 21. So, so that's what we're using. And that's to, what you use. Do the then, final holes. Now, if you're using the tap co kit, they're all the same sizes, except for uh, the small screws that are for the trigger guard, but those don't need to be tapped at all. That's what yeah. these little nuts are for to yeah. hold that in place. That's the nice thing about the Tapco is that all these um, these screws are the same size. If, with a CNC Warrior, they have two different sizes, so you have to have two different um, you have to have two different bits, two different tap and dies, um, which is fine. I managed to get a kit that had both, um, but. Uh, Tabco, I'm sure, is, is just as good um, as far as the bolt's concerned, the strength of the bolt and, and all that. So um, we'll see how it goes. The nice thing about these AKs is just it sucks if you screw it up. It does suck if you screw it up. But as long as you're not screwing up this particular build with these AMD kits that you get from Classic Firearms where the barrel's already pressed in and you're not going to press the barrel out because you don't have all those tools and equipment to do that, this is a great first build, right? You screw up a receiver, that sucks. I mean, that's 75 bucks or 100 bucks. That sucks, but it's not the end of the world. You screw up these rear trunnions, they're 20 bucks all day long, no big deal. Um, so there is some forgiveness here. You don't, I and mean, this is the assembly that you don't want to ruin the barrel, this front trunnion. That's the difficult part. I my first build was a Romanian kit. I pressed that barrel in myself. I built a um, a tension device with some raw steel and threaded and, and threads. I didn't buy. In the future, I would recommend there are specific kits made for doing that. 
but I manufactured my own jig and <clears throat> it worked, um, but it was a huge pain in the tail. Um, so this is a nice kit. When I built my AMD, everything's pressed in. You just have to understand that when you're doing these front screws, you can't use you can't use this tapered bit. You have to use flat um, a flat tap. You know, you can't use a uh, because it's too shallow it's and too you run shallow. into the barrel, right? You hit the barrel down there, so right. the tapered end it, run, it hit the barrel before you got all the threads cut. Yeah. So it created yeah. a problem, and I had to size up. So I had to go to a size up screw. So learn that lesson. Now we're going to use, um, we'll probably just cut down on this bit and um, thread okay. it that way. But we'll see how it goes. We'll keep you updated. Here. All right. So we'll uh, do some more, and then we'll do another update. But so far, there she is right there. Get this out of the way. There it is right there. So far we're uh, plugging along. Looks like it's going to work. So we'll be back. This is the first shot. See if she's going to work. We ran a cleaning cleaning uh, spore snake through it. So alright. Here it goes. Safety off. First shot. Nice trigger. I do get the typical trigger slap though. Okay, we're gonna do a little shooting with the stock folded. You can see that I can easily reach the trigger here with the stock the way it folds in. So we'll do a little just for fun. Um, I don't know, should we put that other camera out to wipe the dirt fly up or does it matter? Oh, it doesn't matter. All right, you ready? Ready. Okay, so this is uh, with the sling. You can shoot pretty fast. Yeah. Yeah. So t t you want to talk about how we managed to finally get it all together and and um, what we loctited it with and all that? Uh, sure. Yeah, it's a screw build, you know, like we mentioned before, and you just um, you get these screw sets from you know there's multiple uh, providers for these uh, screw kits. And they're specifically designed for these rifles, for AKs. And so you just get a tap and die set from your hardware store. And you get a shallow one for these front um, screws where the barrel is behind it. And these other ones you can use a regular tapered uh, tap and die. And you just you drill out the hole with the proper size bit. You tap it with the proper size tap. And then... You can thread in your bolt. And then we use a little blue Loctite, which is not permanent Loctite. It's it's uh, it's just temporary Loctite, but it'll work as long as you keep the. Is there anything loose light. on it right now? After all that shooting we did. Is there anything loose on it? Yeah. Anything starting to come loose? Any screws or anything? I mean, not that I can tell. Everything seems to be. Just those uh, those those ones on the side that we had a hard time keeping the the little retaining. Uh, shepherd's hook thing in there. Well, that stupid shepherd's hook, and that's that's a characteristic of these guns. You got to get. But they're not working out, are they? No, that's fine. Yeah. They're they're in place. They're good. But I would say if you're gonna if you plan on taking this thing apart, um, again, just get the retention plate. That's a seven dollar, seven to ten dollar plate that hooks that hooks over the. Um, it hooks over the trigger uh, retention bolt and the hammer retention bolt here and then the uh, safety bar arm goes through the top piece. And it's it. all one piece and it's it just, just slides piece, in. It just kind of slides into place 
It's way better than these little metal springs that you got to work around and hook around. And it's pain in the tail. And it's a retainer to keep what? To keep the... Uh, to uh, keep the pins from backing out. Uh, to keep those pins right there. To keep these, keep these those pins, pins here from backing out, which yeah. is... These are the retaining pins for the trigger mechanism yeah. and for the hammer mechanism. That's what yeah. these pins are. Yeah. And, you know, they come out and the whole assembly comes out in pieces. Yeah. And that's how you assemble it and disassemble it. But... You know, there's a reason why everyone on the internet and all the forums, they just say, forget the spring, get the plate. And mm -hmm. there's a reason for it. I've never used the springs. I just, from the first build, I bought the plates and used the plates. And mm -hmm. this one, we used the the manufacturer's spring that came with it. And it was a huge pain in the tail. Mm -hmm. And you can't find much, um, you can't find much supporting documentation as to how it properly goes in because nobody uses them everyone just tosses them and uses the plates so we were kind of doing a little guesswork uh, obviously the way we did it was is successful and it's working how long did it take us to do it the total build yeah I don't know, five hours uh, mm. maybe more like 10 hours I guess maybe no more than 10 hours I'd say yeah you no know, we did it in most of the screws all of, all of the screws that weren't interfacing with the barrel here, we did in one day. We got them all cut, and we got them all tapped and screwed in. And then we had to cut down a bit because we couldn't buy the correct, the flat um, tap bit. So yeah. we modified a tapered bit, uh, tap and die bit, uh, for putting in... For the shallow screws, the right? The shallow screws, right. For those that, really shallow screws right there. That, yeah. um, where the barrel is... Yeah, because we right didn't behind because it. we didn't press the barrel out. Right. Yeah. So that took a little more, little more time, and then yeah. assembling all the internal parts, mm -hmm. and kind of smoothing out all the hammer parts, and get everything mm -hmm. all kind of put together. It took a little time, mm -hmm. yeah, but overall, less than ten hours. But it's because I built two of them, mm -hmm. so it take it's going to take you more time if it's mm -hmm. your first one. And I think screw builds are the way to go for mm -hmm. an initial build. They've all worked fine for me. Mm -hmm. um, I know there's a lot of people that are a lot better at it than I am, that have built many, many more than I have. They're on the internet that have said, no, rivets are the way to go, but you gotta buy extra stuff. Equipment that you're never gonna use again if you only build one. Yeah, you pay you pay three hundred, four hundred dollars for the parts kit and another three hundred or four hundred dollars for all the crap you need to right. put it together. I'd say if you're somebody who just you want an AK, you want to you want to build one yourself, you want to have the fun um, in doing that, then just get one of these kits from Classic Firearms for $275. You just, you can't beat it. You can't mm. beat it. It's a good deal. Yeah. And you don't have to do it in this configuration. I, like I said um, earlier in the video, I replaced the rear trunnion with a traditional trunnion and put a traditional stock on it. I put a collapsible, adjustable um, Archangel stock on it. And then I, I found uh, a quad rail for this on Amazon. It's cheap. It's junk. I paid probably thirty bucks for it. Um, but you know, that's but really what your options are limited with yeah. AMDs. This one is built pretty much stock. So this is this is stock. That's the stock. That's the kit, just like it came. This is the, what the kit comes in. This is what you got. This is mm -hmm. what it is. And so, and this is fun too. Mm -hmm. So it just depends on what you want to do. It's your rifle. You can build mm -hmm. it the way you want to build it. And, you know, so there's mm. a lot of options out there. Mine, yeah. I got rid of, I didn't use this front uh, grip on you know, my quad rail. I'll probably put a, something here, but. Yeah, I wanted this in more traditional. Right. So you can do whatever you want with it. And you can, mm. you can do it on the cheap. And these kits are not going to be around forever. Mm -hmm. and Good deal, though. Two seventy nine. I think I, I well paid two seventy nine for it. Right. Yeah. Mine. I had mine for a long time before I built my first AK kit. Was a uh, a Romanian AK kit that I had probably five or six years before I decided to actually yeah. build it. But I had to press the barrel in. I had to go full bore on that thing. Um, so it took a lot of time. Mm -hmm. This kit was a lot easier to put together because the barrels pressed in. That's the hardest part. That's the part that would require you to buy additional tools mm -hmm. or have to become have to get real creative which is what I had to do uh, because I didn't want to buy the tools um, so with this barrel already pressed in all all of the the gas block 
the front sight, um, all of that was cut and um, head space too, right? Placed in the barrel pin was already cut and put in. Yeah, and head space. All that stuff's already done, which you don't have to do, and that's the mm -hmm. vast majority of time machining work that you'll mm -hmm. have to do to build an AK is is in these parts. Mm -hmm. And since it's, you're cutting a round surface, you have to have the right bit. You have to be very careful. Mm -hmm. It's a it, it takes it's a process. And these pre-built, these partially pre-built kits take care of all that for you. So all you really have to do is... Plus it's an American spec barrel, so it's 16 inches and it's legal. Yeah. It's absolutely legal. Right. You've got a lot less opportunity for the ATF to come back and say, oh no, it's we've changed the ruling or something. You've got a 16 inch barrel. Yeah. Well, it... This kid makes it easy. I would say spend the money. Uh, overall, your money and in, input into it is going to be under $400. Uh -huh. um, maybe $450. Depends on how expensive you want to go with it. Uh -huh. But that should be about the extent of it. So uh -huh. well, let, let, pick up a kit, try it yourself. If you screw it up. Yep. Let's go back and shoot it a little more distance. See if we can get some more distance out of it. All right, sounds good.